G'day, it's Glenn here from jazzpianolessons.tv and today we're going to be looking at two voicings, the axis of a third and an axis of a seventh. These are two-handed voicings and uh, let's get stuck into it. Okay, so we've got our axis of a third and seventh voicing and uh, I, I really love playing these ones. These are some of my favourite voices. These are two-handed voicings. Now if you, you heard me saying that I was going to do open and, uh, sorry, the... Uh, the uh, what was it? The open and closed voicing and the A and B voicings first. I apologise. They'll be the next few videos. Um, I decided to go with the third and seventh voicing. Now these, if we, if you look, if you're unsure of, you know, major seven chords and minor seven chords, dominant seven chords, and all that kind of stuff, go check out the the previous videos and get familiar with those and work around the cycle of fourths. And that would be um, where I would start if you, if you're not sure about that. If you are sure about those things, this is the video for you. This is the axis from third and seventh voicing. All right. So we've got. Uh, if I if I just uh, really quickly draw up a, uh, where's our here's our C major seven. I'm going to draw it up for you as well. Okay. That's what it sounds like. Um, I'm playing it down here at this stage. Okay. You can. Oh, I'm almost. Thinking about the voicing already. Okay, so we've got our C, E, G, B, 1, 3, 5, 7, right? All we're going to do to do the axis of a third voicing is take the E and put it up an octave. I'm going to bring all these down lower. Let's just go down here so we can, we can do that a little bit easier. Right, so I'm going to take the E here. I'm going to put it here. Now, if you've got big hands, you might be able to do that with one hand. I don't. And uh, I'm going to use the orange to say that's my right hand and the lime green colour for my left hand. So we've got this. So I've gone from that, taken the E and put it up here. And I've taken out that E. Now, you could play it like that if you wanted to. Um, but on this occasion, I'm going to play it like that. And so I'm using the fingers uh, um, three one one three. And you could use whatever you want, really. That's that's fine. But it does help when we're moving to the next chord. Now here it is in notation. So hopefully that will help you. You've got your one and five seven three. This is an axis of a third voicing. Now if you wanted to do the axis of a seventh voicing, it's very similar. It's one five down here, but it's three seven. So all this is this has been inverted here. That's all that's happened here. So we've taken this B and we've put it up to here, which is still the note B, just an octave high. So instead of this sound, we have this sound. Depending on where the melody is or what you're doing is is really up to you as to you know what voicing am I going to use in in the song. Now if we look at my romance, we did this uh, in the first few videos. And we played it like that, just in root position. But if we use the axis of a third voicing. In my opinion, it just sounds a little bit better. And it's just kind of nicely spaced out here. There's a little bit of room down here in the lower, more muddier type uh, area of the piano. And, and if I use uh, for the D minor 7, the axis of the 7th as well. Uh, sorry, axis of the 3rd again. That, uh, that can work out quite well. Now the melody actually is the axis of the 7th for the E flat. And so on, we can use that there. Now, what I want to show you um, very great, uh, very quickly is how the axis of the third and seventh works together really well. Now, this is just you know, this is C major seven here, um, but if I want to go around the cycle of fourths, for example, this is where it gets really kind of cool. Whatever you start with, here's our cycle of fourths: C, F, B flat, E flat. We're just going to do that much together and then uh, then you can you can try it out for yourself and if we just let's just do major major chords and 
that's hopefully in the video still. Yes, it is fantastic. Okay, so we're going to start off with, let's spread that out a little bit better. We're going to start off with just these major chords here, just the first four of the uh, cycle of fourths. And I'm going to start with the axis of a seventh. Now this is the interval of a seventh, and that's why it's called the axis of a seventh, because it's kind of, you know, on the outside there. Now I'm going to stay one five in in the. So this is um, this, this is not one five here, but what I'm saying. I'm going to start with one five in the left hand all the time. So I'm I'm going to go up here. I could go down. That'd be equally fine. So that's one five, right? So we've got one five, one five, one five, and then uh, one five here. Now, if you did four-part harmony at music school, you know that's not a very good idea, but jazz piano works fine. Uh, so we've got our one five. That's the kind of fingering that I use there. If I was going around the cycle of four, so I'll continue on. Right, there's all, all, all 12 there. Now, what I'm doing here, now this is, this is where it gets really cool. So I'm just going to take away... The left hand, you know, that's just one five. You could even just do the, uh, you know, the root note would sound okay as well. But here's our three and our seven of C. Now what happens here is when we go to the F chord and the seven and the three changes around, this is this becomes our seven. So that note actually stays there, but the B, which was the seventh and now is going to be the three.